fstoppers.com has teamed up with Alaya Licardi to create Photographing the World 3, the ultimate photography tutorial on all things landscape and cityscape photography. You're watching the behind the scenes series on the creation of this full tutorial. And if you'd like to learn more about the full product, head over to fstoppers.com slash store. So we got the shot last night. We did, we did. It's uh, pretty, it's still kind of overcast a little, but at least you can see the mountain. We pulled this off, we were here for five days. We endured a lot of bad weather. And then as we just pay for our hotel and we're about to go get the car, of course, <laughs> look at this. It's like, I haven't seen a blue sky here the whole time. Sun all on the city. Yeah, the day we leave is when the weather gets beautiful. Look at this. Man, that is perfect out there. So somebody else who gets this tutorial will just have to come out here and get the, the bright and sunny shot and uh, they can share it with the group and make us all jealous that they did it in one day. Yeah, please. They're going to be like, we were, I, was, I went there for a day and ziplined across and got the shot and it was great. Well, that wraps up, uh, how do you say this place? Pietra Pertosa. Pietra Pertosa. Close. So it's our last day in Pietra Pertosa. And uh, the weather, like we just showed you, is unbelievable. It is so clear out here that instead of going to the next town, we are toying with the idea of just staying here and driving over to the other town that we never got to shoot and just stay here, you know, four more hours and get the sunset shot that we wanted to get and then go drive two or three hours to the next location and get in there late at night. I think you got it. Keep coming. Keep coming. Woo! That was a sheet of paper right there. Yeah. I think that looks good. We then started our journey to the neighboring town on some of the most narrow roads I have ever seen in my life. When we got to the next location, we decided to film the lesson in a different way. As you can see, I'm currently on the road. We had such a nice day today. We spent five days in Pietra Pertosa trying to get that one shot. And the day we leave, it's beautiful and sunny outside. So instead of going to our next destination, we decided we'd explore. So the idea is there are a couple really beautiful towns and most likely some other stuff to photograph. I wanted to be in the town that we just shot and spend time exploring the area around, but we didn't really have time because of the weather. So now I'm kind of just driving around to see if we can get a good shot of Castle Mezzano, which is actually the neighboring town that shares the same mountain range. But we're in a mountain road, so I can't just hike, since it's about a 30 minute drive between the towns, I can't hike between. So the best way that I can actually scout this is from the road. So we've moved on to this next little mountain village and we are not staying here tonight. We're just gonna get a picture and then move on to the next location. Because this was the first time that any of us had ever visited this town, we scoured the entire area to find the best location to shoot. I've never been here and I have no idea if all these trees are overgrown. I've only seen a few pictures of this on the internet and nothing says deal breaker for a shot like chain link fence. I have to admit the spot seemed much closer until I parked the car and actually walked down here. And from the car, this spot looked much better, but now standing here, it's not as good as it originally looked. And the reason is, there's really only this small window to capture the town. So here's the view through the video app on my phone. Again, keep in mind, this is 16 by nine, so we're not gonna get a normal three by two frame that we would out of the camera, but it'll still give you a really good idea of what I'm looking at. First thing is, in order for the shot to work, I'd have to zoom in. Once I zoom in, framing just the mountains in the town, there's still a lot of stuff in the foreground. See the road down there, those buildings, the dead trees? It still doesn't look that good. So even if I crop in, I don't feel like this is a portfolio shot. I also think that I can find a better vantage point. So what I wanna do now is try the last road that I can think of. There's one more road 
that'll take me out around, away from the town, not quite as high as this, but I think it may give me the perspective I'm looking for. To get these follow shots from above, I was in the car flying the drone. At this point, there was only about an hour left until sunset, and we were not going to get another chance to get this shot, so we kept looking frantically for the best location for the image. So here I am, all set up in the location that we have chose. Now, I'm still not 100% happy with the shot, but I think we can make it work. It's really gonna come down to a little bit of post-processing, though. In this camera, I'm shooting wide. In this one, I'm shooting medium. In the wide camera, I actually have two wires running through my shot. In the medium shot, I actually only have one. But either way, that's gonna require some cleanup. Now right now I'm set up, it's still a little bit early, there's still that harsh shadow on the town. In a little bit of time, once the sun starts to set, that shadow is going to climb all the way up those buildings, past the mountain, it's going to illuminate the mountains in the background until the sun sets all the way. Once the sun sets all the way, we're going to transition into an early blue hour, and then what I think is going to happen is during the mid-blue hour, we're going to get enough light in the town, and we're going to still have enough light on the mountains to get a beautiful shot. One, two, three, four, five, six cameras set up, all shooting this blue hour. We've got cameras taking pictures and cameras doing time lapses. Even our little baby Panasonic with the Polaroid tripod is working perfectly. We have another one here on a legit tripod. I still prefer this little guy. I think it's all we really need. So as you can see, we've been loving this little Lumix camera. We bring it everywhere just to film these time lapses. But the one problem with the time lapse function is that it has to build the time lapse afterwards. And it's a very, very slow process. Uh, sometimes taking like 20 minutes if it's a long enough time lapse. And so this this camera's kind of out of commission right now while it builds this time lapse. And with the new D500, when you're in the time lapse setting, you can actually cut the camera off, turn it back on, and the time lapse video is made. So it's like making the video as it goes. But this camera, what it does instead is it takes pictures and then asks you if you want to use those pictures to make a time lapse afterwards. So Lee just showed you one problem with this camera is that once you get done with the time lapse, it has to build it. But the second problem that I just realized um, is that I stop a time lapse hoping to restart it again with different settings and the stupid lens goes back in. So this time lapse is completely done. There is no way that I could recompose the shot with the same focal length. So unlike the Nikon cameras where you stop the time lapse and then rechange the settings and then restart the camera, this one, it's kind of a one-time go, so hopefully we got the shot. Do you think with all these cameras that we are going to capture a picture in a time lapse? Are we gonna get it? I hope we I hope we can walk away with this with at least a picture. Yeah, that'd be nice. That is ISO 32,000. Yes, you read that correctly. And it probably looks horrible. This is very similar to the previous lesson. Both cameras are set up, two different perspectives, both set to interval timer mode. This time I'm shooting every one minute because I wanna capture all the subtle changes with the blue hour and the lights from the town itself. So while these two cameras are running, I'm gonna seek the warmth of the car and I'm gonna wait until the end of the blue hour and then I'm gonna pack it up and call it a night. After the shoot, we packed up and headed to Matera. That night, we ate at one of the most highly recommended restaurants in the entire city. Strangely enough, we were the only people there, though. I have to admit, I didn't have the highest expectations for this restaurant, but once the food started coming out, we were all blown away. This is shaping up to be one of the best Italian meals I've ever had. And we're only in like the first cheese plate, yeah. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. Maybe leave from this restaurant. Yeah. Changes his whole entire opinion, 100%. I could eat, I could eat Italian like this every day. <laughs> yes. Like if 
this is a precursor of what we're about to get. I'm having a good time here. I am really enjoying this food. Not only was this the best meal I've ever had in Italy, it ended up being one of the best meals I've ever had, period. So tonight we had an amazing meal, which I think proves my point that Italian food can be fantastic, but that most restaurants in Italy, especially in Rome, are horrible. Uh, because if we went out to this fancy restaurant tonight and the food was bad, then we could make the argument either that all Italian food is bad or that I simply do not like real Italian food. But each time we go to one of these really nice restaurants, I love the food. So I think this proves that I am right and Rome is just really struggling in the restaurant department. So this room is not the best for a server, chargers, cables, laptops, but we have this little nook. And so I am going to take the cables and put them on this nook. We've got one more baby bed and one more adult bed. Here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> you want to see something really funny? I told you at dinner I was going to throw scissors first. And I was going to do scissors, paper, paper. <laughs> I didn't even have to do this third one. <laughs> to learn more about the full tutorial, head over to fstoppers.com slash store and stay tuned for next week's episode when I capture this incredible drone shot. Mm -hmm.